started. Um, is this the is the music? That's is this the music. music? That the music is going on. Oh, this is music. No, it's the bass song is raining. Oh, that's the bass song. Okay, it's a little stop. Oh, there you go. So, um, welcome to our first show of the year. Uh, this is our signature show for 2024. And our last show of the year, last year, was right here. <laughs> <laughs> the same show. <laughs> so we had, um, we have actually 96 uh, total signature members, and we had 94 entries. So that's wow. pretty good, yeah, that's right? Cool. Yeah. Um, and the, out of that, there's 36 artists, um, and 56 pieces were accepted into this show. Okay out of 36 artists. Uh, and we already have six sales yes. before yes. opening night. Yes. 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 Very good. Very good. So, um, I am excited to introduce our juror and judge this year, uh, Judith Smith. So Judith actually started her artistic uh, professional life uh, in, in the mid 60s as a medical illustrator. That makes me sound very old. <laughs> <laughs> Experienced. And, and then she spent 20 years doing printmaking and then neon sculpture um, with uh, found objects. And um, couldn't sell any of that. <laughs> People are afraid it will electrocute the children. <laughs> and then about 15 years ago, she discovered pastels and encaustic mediums. So she's been a member of uh, the Northwest Pastel Society since 1996 and has been a distinguished pastelist since 2008, and that is the highest um, level of um, sort of awards that we can give, um, is to be a distinguished pastelist. So she ho also holds um, a signature membership at the pa Pastel Society of America, and the Pastel Society of the West Coast, and the Knickerbockers Artist of New York, which sounds kind of interesting. Unfortunately, um, they're closed. Oh, <laughs> that's a very old society, so I'm pleased to be a part of it. She's a juried, juried member of the Women's Painters of Washington and of the Society of Animal Artists. And she recently has been experimenting with combining pastel and acrylic varnish to avoid the need for glass for framing. And so there aren't that many people really innovating in this medium and we are really interested in talking to you more about maybe doing a workshop or a demo. She's gonna do some of that for us already. Yeah. So more more on that. Um, I brought one tonight too. That's the oh, reason I brought yeah, it. Yeah, it's hanging up. It's, very, yeah. it's a very simple painting, but I brought that for that reason rather than bringing a pastel. A oh, total, it is totally pastel, 100 percent. But then I varnished it, and that's my secret. So Judith also is fortunate to to enjoy a very active lifestyle, and uh, she enjoys activities like uh, river running, backpacking, scuba diving and lots of world travel, uh, which brings her in close contact with a lot of the wild creatures and animals that she loves to, to portray. So she's really combining her love for art and her love for being like really alive and, and vibrant in the world. So um, without Thank further you. ado, um, welcome Judith. Gee, so. I, I'm a hard act to follow. Thank you very much. And just a word about that painting that's up front. Uh, someone from the society did ask me if I would give uh, a demonstration on Zoom, and I can do that. I just couldn't do it in March, which is what they asked me for. So I'm happy to talk to anybody about how I do that, um, but I'll keep the secrets for the, the okay. uh, Zoom for show. The yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're ready to hand out the surprises. Well, I'd love to have you say just a few words on what you, what criteria you use to juror. Um, the show in terms of selecting what artist pieces went in, and then of course, um, and we'll go through the award winners and what you did to, to judge the show. Okay. Um, first thing, I have a very large or pretty large uh, monitor in my studio, and so I'm and I have a good color calibration, so I'm able to really see the paintings that come to me. I saw mostly good representations of the paintings did see a few that are still having trouble with photography, which is extremely important. I know that people hear that all the time in their prospectuses, but 
it really is important because I came here this afternoon and I saw a couple of things that I went, wow, that's not what I thought it was. <laughs> and it was a surprise to me. So, um, but I did spend a lot of time with my computer. Uh, I actually went to some websites of people that I thought I have seen their work somewhere before and it didn't look like what I saw submitted to this show and I wanted to balance things and have another look. Um, I probably spent, my husband will attest to this, about two days on my computer looking at these images. And this afternoon, I thought, well, I've got it made. I figured out who I'm going to give the prizes to. And I walked in and I went, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. And so I asked Kathy if I could please sit down somewhere. And she gave me a seat upstairs very kindly. And I was here until 3 o'clock um, working on it because I wanted to make sure that I was following my own criteria and trying very hard not to just follow my own taste because that's a problem any juror has. You know, we have things that are close to our heart and very difficult to overlook. Um, and I had to do a lot of that and hold back on some things and make sure that I gave an equal representation to the different types of pastel paintings you can see here tonight. So I spread things out a little bit. Um, you might be surprised at some of my choices, but all jury work is very subjective. So forgive me if any of you here are in the show and didn't get an award. It isn't because you're not a great painter, because I think everybody who entered here, whether this was their best piece that they entered or not, is a really worthy artist. You're all signature members, so you have to be good, right? So nobody should go away feeling unhappy if they didn't get an award, because to be an artist is reward in itself. I mean, what else would you want to do with your life, really? <laughs> We're very lucky. Yeah. Okay, so we yes. should start walking around? We should. Okay. So, um, we're gonna start uh, with our honorable mentions and then go up to Best of Show. Okay. okay. We have two honorable mentions. I would have liked six because I found six paintings that in my mind were about the same level and I had to take two, and it was terrible. <laughs> so wow. know that a lot of you were in the running. Uh, the first of those would be the koi painting, where it says a crowd of koi over there in the corner. And as we walk over, I'll just say, I've probably seen too many koi paintings in my life. And they've all been pretty much the same, beautifully finished, articulate, wonderful, shining, this one's a little bit off that, and that's why I chose it. This one surprised me with a playful immediacy and a sense of movement. And I could feel when I looked at it that whoever painted it was sitting there, plein air, with the paper in front of them doing it. Because it doesn't look like it came from a photograph. It looks like it came from her heart. She loved these, or he, uh, she, I think, she said, yes. loved these fish and was having a good time painting them because they're full of light. They're just the right amount of let back and come close. I loved it. So it's an honorable mention. So that award goes to Susan Gorey. Is she here in the house? Okay, why don't we take a look okay. at the painting and we'll go to the yeah. next one. Have a look. Right. So she's sitting in front of a painting outside on the edge of a koi pond. I love the way it does all of the things a good painting should do. The fish in the back have been let back with little detail. Some of these have more detail in the front, so they're coming toward you. The warm colors are all throughout, but they are balanced nicely. And the fish's faces are wonderful. Because I'm a diver, I'm kind of drawn to fish, and I love their expressions. They do have them, and these guys are just terrific. I like them. So that's the reason I chose this painting goes to uh, Janice Wall for Waterways. And I think Janice is actually sick today. Oh, oh that's but, too bad. Yeah, it goes to this one right here. Okay, that's why I thought you were. I guess after a while. I think we've well, not seen her for a long time, so. I think she's got a couple of inches on her. Oops. And she doesn't. And she doesn't speak oh, with a funny accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, This one is, is typical of things that I have seen Jan do in the past, and I've always loved her work. Um, this shows a uniqueness of vision and personal style 
that's evident here. And a repetition of the shapes and the rhythm give the painting its character. I love abstract art. I started my career as a medical illustrator, which means I was drawing every single thing in front of me, and sometimes <laughs> things that weren't in front of me. And I have spent 40 years trying to be an abstract painter. And I just got there recently, so I have a little time. Um, I love abstract. This is one that I'm drawn to personally. And I couldn't not give it something because it's my heart. So I really love that. And I'm sorry Jan isn't here tonight or I would tell her that. Uh, the next uh, is a Jurors Award. Um, and it goes to Jill Story for Come Sit With Me. Yes, this is the little painting right here at the end of that first wall of the porch spring swing. Is Jill here? We've got three people who aren't here. Well, we're doing okay. Oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> okay. You can still, we'll still capture it on, on video. <laughs> okay. Painting invites a small, or it's a small slice of life that reveals a lot about the painter as well as the place. It invites the viewer into the scene. There's a beautiful representation of light. In fact, that's what attracted me to it. It just made me feel as though I could go there and sit on that swing and be very perfectly happy. It's the kind of painting that you could have in your home and come back to look at it many times. Anytime you were feeling kind of down, you just wanted to sit down with a cup of tea and you didn't have a porch swing, you could go and stand near your painting. I love this little painting. I think it's, uh, it's warm, it's inviting. Mm -hmm. I think there's a real connection to be made to it. So mm -hmm. that was one of my personal juror choices. Uh, the next is also a juror's award, and it goes to Ann Knapp for mm -hmm. Spring Awakening. Now, this is going to be interesting to probably wonder about this. This is Spring Awakening. And this one really requires you to come close and look at the beautiful way she's handled the pastel. This is a, somebody who is very good with the pastel sticks. And partly there I was attracted to it because I have a, uh, a love of Gauguin. Paul Gauguin was one of my mentors in my mind when I started pastel. I loved his forms, his shapes, his juicy forms, and his color it was exquisite. And this reminded me of that, and that's why I gave him the award. I think it's beautifully handled. Delightful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's great okay. And now we have the Director's Award, uh, otherwise known as the Third Place Award, and it goes to Harley Talkington for Against the Flow. Yes, Against Yay. the Flow. Absolutely love this mm -hmm. painting. <laughs> um, Primacy of touch is evident in this piece. It's fresh, full of movement, excitement. Oh, that one. Oh, yes. The power of the painting is transferred to the viewer. Yeah. I think that's a very important thing when you're looking at this kind of abstract art. Um, I think he did it outside. I think he did it very quickly, but with a lot of consideration of his surroundings. And to me, it's just, it just sparkles. It pulls me in. It lets me finish the story. The interesting thing is the painting hanging next to it is also his. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I, this is very personal too, but I think I looked at it and I said, oh yeah, I was there doing my medical illustration. <laughs> and then I was there. Oh. And I just love that painting. I think it's great. It pulls you in. and. There's always something to look at in there, something to discover, something to find and connect with. Especially if you travel a lot. That picture is everywhere I've ever been. I love it. Second place award, which is the President's Award, and it goes to Christine Troyer for Winter Impression. This is the 
perfect winter landscape. It really is. Uh, and I know a lot of you are able to do perfect winter landscapes, but this one is here tonight. So This was difficult because there are some other paintings in this show that are also excellent examples of pastel landscape. Fantastic examples, but I only have one second place. And I love this. I feel it would it's a little disadvantaged with the heavy dark frame. Um, it, it does have a gold inset here, a fillet. It could use more. It needs to have a little more light around it for you to appreciate it. This online, when I looked at it, with the light coming from behind and no frame, was absolutely stunning on my computer. So that's why I had already had it in mind to give it an award. And I still love it. I love it when I see it in real life. I see all of the tiny bit of light that hits this branch just a little jewel, the red, the subtle reds that she's used and how she's used them. It's just the quintessential winter landscape. And I must have said some simple, direct style and sophisticated palette. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And we have our first place, which is our best of show. And, and it's in the front, we have to take a walk. <laughs> it goes to Deb Henderson for Radiance. So let's check that out. It's right up here. Is Deb here? No. I don't think so. Oh, Sometimes when I walk into a gallery or a museum, I will look at a painting and say, gee, I wish I had painted that. Um, and that painting says that to me. It's, it's timeless. You'll never get tired of looking at that little painting. It's got strong, bold color balanced by neutrals. It, it attracted me right away. It has an emotional impact which comes from not what you're painting, but how well you paint it. And that little painting says it all. However, someone bought her other one, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to say. Been a day, so. so there's every painting in here is worthy of being sold, believe me, every painting in here. But I love that one. So I hope that hasn't disappointed too many people. I wish that I had more awards to hand out. Surely we all deserve them, but we can't. <laughs> We'd go broke. <laughs> Are there any questions about anything? You know, I'd be happy. Oh, right here. This is the look at this pastel you can touch. No glass. So this is pastel. This is pastel, 100% pastel, oh with water. There's water on it too because I used I painted this very quickly with a sponge brush. Mm -hmm. In the other, in the picture of me down in Utah, you're seeing me use just pastels there, pastel sticks. But this was painted in my studio, out of my head. It comes from inside. Most of my work now does. And I painted it with a sponge brush, maybe in an hour. And uh, it's all pastel with water. The water gives you the streaks and the brush marks and everything. And then the horse and rider, my Don Quixote. <laughs> is done with uh, some charcoal and black pastel. But, and then I sealed it with acrylic varnish. So I don't know what our societies are going to say about this as far as injuring it in the show. I never have tried to. But, you know, you're supposed to have 80% pastel. Right. It does, it has 100%. But how does that work with the, the rules and sealing it with the acrylic? So I don't know. That's a question to bring up at one of the meetings and talk about it. Right. How right, people right. feel about it. And that is done on canvas. Done on canvas. Mm -hmm. Just on okay. canvas. And so you're taking the pastel with a sponge and then going over with water with a brush? Yeah, or I'm putting a, pastel on. With just putting it on. No, with oh. my hand. With pastel okay. so with a stick. And then I take a, a wet sponge. A wet sponge brush and move it around. Ah. Paint with it. Like one of those cheap 
yeah. spun brushes okay. from a Home Depot, right. the black right. one. Okay. That doesn't mean I sell the painting cheaply, but yes. No, no, I'm just, you know, I'm talking about your tools. <laughs> no, not even Home Depot. This is Ace Hardware. Oh, Ace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, come take a look because, uh, you know, I think that Judith is doing some really innovative work, as I said, you know, really innovating. Um, and uh, this is kind of really interesting is how, how can we do pastels that are not under glass. Uh, I'm using yes. pastel. Uh, I, it is my favorite medium, and so I'm using it everywhere. I'm also using it in my encaustic work. I'm grinding my pastels up and putting them into beeswax <clears throat> and using them that way. I use them for pigment always. Um, I recently bought some pan pastels, which I have never used before, and I'm playing with those right now, too, to see what else I can do with them. I use them in my new work, which is mixed media and um, collage. I'm still using the pastels. They're one of my go-to things. They are my go-to thing for color. There's nothing like pastel for color. Nothing. I did about five years of neon sculpture back in the day, <laughs> and I loved the light I got from it. And that was right before I turned to pastel. I had to give up the neon because, as I said, no one, no one would buy it. Um, and I almost electrocuted my husband with it. So I, he came to the basement one night. Funny story, 11 o'clock at night, I'm in the basement, and I'm putting together this thing that looks like a volcano with all these tubes that I've, I've bent. And I haven't grounded it completely yet. I had some copper mesh that looked sort of like steam coming out of the top of a volcano. And I hadn't figured out quite how I was going to ground that. And he comes across the basement floor in his bare feet, says, when are we going to bed? It's 11 o'clock. Oh, I like what you've done with that mesh. <laughs> he got a heck of a shock. It wasn't that she didn't understand how to ground it. She was unfamiliar with some of the Newtonian concepts of electricity. <laughs> this is the difference. On this a is... cement basement floor in a 100-year-old house. No, but wait a minute. This is the difference between someone who got an A in physics and someone who got a C in physics. The person who got a C in physics still believes that electricity is magic and you don't mess with it. That's me. The person who got an A in physics got a shock. <laughs> anyway, he helped me connect it to the transformer. We got it, we got it grounded, but anyway. So if there are any questions about that, look forward to seeing a, uh, a Zoom show sometime in the future when I connect with the lady that's, yeah. that's doing that. Yeah. yeah. And feel free to really spend some time looking at all the pieces. We just went over the award-winning pieces, but there, again, there's some great pieces here. Definitely. And uh, uh, enjoy some refreshments. And um, we will all be here for a little while, so welcome. <laughs>